Hello and welcome to our first Training Room episode. This episode is about where to find training resources. Future videos will provide mentorship on employing these resources to form training strategies and training plans. So with that said, let's get into it. Now, because the Army is all about multi-domain operations these days, we should start at the top and at the joint level. We start with the joint mission requirements and associated tasks. So if you're in a joint unit, you start here at jcs.mil, Joint Training, Universal Joint Task List. You then click this link to open up the PDF, and here you go. So everything with a SN is a Strategic National Task. Everything that is ST is a strategic theater task, everything that is OP is an operational task, and everything marked TA are tactical tasks. Now if you want to find your intelligence-related tasks, you just have to follow the traditional staff numbering system of 1 for administration, 2 for intelligence, 3 for operations, 4 for logistics, and so on. So SN2, ST2, OP2, and TA2. And when you get into these, you can see that there's multiple M categories or measures. So you can see what each one is evaluated against and what the authors believe is useful in terms of judging how effective anyone is at doing any of these tasks. If you are in an Army-only unit, you go here to see Generic Unit Mission Requirements. And that is the Army Training Network, atn.army.mil. The website is CAC enabled, so we will only show some snippets from areas of the web page. Here we're going to show the CATS, Metal, DTMS, etc. bar. You click the Metal link and you're taken directly to the Metal of the unit you are assigned to. A standard Mission Essential Task List is an approved Headquarters Department of the Army official listing of a unit's Mission Essential Tasks. A Mission Essential Task is a collective task on which an organization trains to be proficient in its designed capabilities or assigned mission. A Mission Essential Task List is a tailored group of Mission Essential Tasks. See FM 7 tac 0 Speaking of FM 7 tac 0 let's do a quick overview on Mission Essential Tasks. Paragraph 2.1 Prioritizing training acknowledges that units cannot achieve or sustain train proficiency on every task simultaneously due to limitations of time or the availability of training resources. Commanders use a prioritized training approach to optimize limited training time and resources to achieve proficiencies based on their unit's mission. To focus this effort, the commander in dialogue with the next higher echelon commander determines the priorities for each proficiency mission essential tasks, weapons qualification, and collective live fire tasks, all based on mission requirements. Similarly, commanders determine and establish training priorities in preparation for operational deployments, combat training center rotations, or daily services for installation support. Prioritized training must link to the unit's mission. Every unit is unique, but the fundamentals of shoot, move, communicate, and survive apply to all types of formations and serve as the basis for prioritization. Paragraph 2, TAC 3. Most deployable company level and above units have a standard medal. These are proponent-driven and approved at HQDA. A standard medal reflects the unit's design capabilities. The key component of Paragraph 2, TAC 5 is the following. A battle task is a platoon or lower level echelon collective task that is crucial to the successful accomplishment of a company, battery, or troop mission essential task. When we drop down to paragraph 2, TAC 8, what we see is this is about STPs, CTLs, and really that whole MITS tier 4 level. And now to complete our reading of FM7 TAC 0, we're going to look at paragraph 2, TAC 13, which just outlines what you should do if your metal is lacking in certain areas, or if you don't have a metal whatsoever. So paragraph 2, TAC 13 tells you precisely how to go about rebuilding or amending your medals. Alright, now if you want to see what the Army Universal Task List looks like, you click this link to ADRP 1TAC03, and there you have it, just like the JUtil, here's the AUtil. Okay, the next resource is ATM. ATAM? However it's pronounced, it is the one-stop shop to view all your Army level training. The DTMS tab in the bottom left is useful to see your individual critical task list, for your MOS. You just click it right here, you get each task number, and then you can go and see each performance measure and its evaluation criteria. Our next resource is the Millbook Group MITS. This consolidates existing material on the military intelligence training strategy. 
which is now being phased out and transitioned to the Army Intelligence Training Strategy. Here you can find the training circulars and importantly for what we've been discussing, the individual critical task list for each MOS. ICANN also has the ICTLs and the Soldier Training Publications button on its homepage, but that just routes you back to ATM. Okay, we now know where to access the information on the things we need to train on, but where is the doctrine on how we're supposed to train to work as a team? IKN's MI Doctrine page is the closest one-stop shop to see all major intelligence publications on the Directorate of Doctrine and Intelligence System training page, DDIST, which is quite handy because it also gives this summary about what each publication covers. Armypubs.army.mil is the non-CAC-enabled website for all Army doctrine. You go to Publications, and then you troll through all the options looking for anything that begins with a 2, 7, 34, or 700. For Irregular Warfare, Ares is great for seeing all the academic research for Irregular Warfare across the world, while JSAO is good for seeing some of the latest publications and thought pieces on Irregular Warfare. Alright, we know where to get the resources for what we need to do and how we should be doing it. Now the question is, where is the material that helps my team and me do realistic training? Well, the ICO website for this is ran by the Learning Innovation Branch, Lib. The site has a fleet of videos and online courses such as Doctrinal Terms Flashcards, Digital Intelligence Systems Foundation Course, MIT's Introduction, Symbology Web Apps, and more. For the broader world of threats, we go to the Tradoc G2 website, ODIN, which stands for Operational Environment Data Integration Network. I love this site. It's awesome. Anyway, moving across the top, we have the CTC tab, which takes you to where you can view all the Vizmod equipment and order of battle for all OP4 of each training center. We then move to the Decisive Action Training Environment World tab for all those training events that we do. Choose an area of the world based on your mission. The left side of the page is the regional overview for your general PMECPT PT stuff. The right side is country-specific PMECPT PT and your country-specific order of battle. Training publications are specifically for the training circulars for the World Class Op 4. This means these publications communicate the foundational concepts of strategies and tactics that all leading militaries employ. This is not country-specific or threat-specific. These are meant to teach general principles of warfare. Virtual Op 4 Academy is a work in progress. It is designed to combine the reading of training publications with videos and interactive computer simulations. The RISTA task is perhaps the best example where you down-click to Reconnaissance and see what the end state is for the overarching tab of Virtual Op 4 Academy. The World Wide Equipment Guide, or WAG. This used to be purely a PDF publication, but is now designed to be interactive with the force design portion of the date world. If you still want or need a PDF, scroll to the middle gray box and select the URL. You can read all about the WAG and see its constituent PDFs. Scroll down to find your desired PDF and click it. Download and or print the PDF by clicking this print icon in the upper right. It is key to note that the WAG is not a comprehensive list of all weapons in use across the world. It is a compilation of the most prolific weapon systems seen in militaries today. It is also only the unclassified information about these weapon systems. Weapons in the WAG are broken down by the tiers 1 through 4, whose definitions and criteria can be seen here on the main WAG page. Back at the WAG landing page, let's get interactive. We see these filters on top. The tier stars filter by the aforementioned tiers of weapons. The origin filters by the country of manufacture. The proliferation filters by country of use. Domain is your standard land, air, sea, etc. Category is the type of system. All filters can be combined for a cumulative effect of, say, Tier 1, China, Air, Air Defense, and the now unlocked subcategory of Hybrid Missile System. Remove filters by hovering over them and clicking the gray X. Let's now select Russia, Tier 2, Artillery, 
2S19M1. And now, as you can see, you have pictures, a systems description tab, dimensions, gun and ammunition, communications. If we go back to the date world tab, select the Novia 4 structure, pick a unit, and then pick a piece of equipment, you get one of two results. It brings an interactive pop-up from the WIG, or it errors and says it cannot find equipment because Tradoc is making constant changes to the site and broke their own links. The solution is to go back to the WIG and search for the equipment. Now, all the way back at the Odin landing page, we go down to the bottom and find these links. Operational Environment Center, OEC, is your Foreign Military Studies area. Select your country of choice for study, and there you have podcasts, audiobooks, infographics, mill tube videos, interactive computer based training, trifolds, tactics ATPs, Foreign Military Studies Office publications, and Order of Battle cards. If you go back to the OEC landing page, all you have to do is scroll down and see all the newsletters, community notifications, training support links, videos, and general support centers. It is also worth a note that under the OE Publications tab, there is the Foreign Military Studies Office FMSO link. The next ODIN link we have is the Red Diamond, which are updates of military operations across the globe. Threat Tactics, which takes you to the Course Enrollment page. APAN, or All Partner Access Network, which roughly replicates the OEC page. The AGC, or Army Geospatial Center link, which takes you to a CAC-enabled ARC portal page for baseline, date KMZs, KMLs, shapefiles, and general map data. Phew! Now that we know where the material is that helps us conduct realistic training, we can look at stuff that refines our knowledge. SpatialIllusions.com is a open code symbol generator, so you don't have to use the PowerPoint-based mother of all graphics to make all your MIL 2525 Charlie or Delta symbology. NGA.MILS, military ordering of NGA products and services, helps you order paper maps from NGA and DLA instead of your supply sergeant. That's right, your GeoInt section doesn't order maps you do or your supply sergeant does. Preferably through this website these days. And this AGC Common Map Background website where you can search for CMB products. There are, of course, a handful of other websites you can use, but they are either single-source support websites, like the NGA's Geovisualization Service website, or they are third-party, non-DOD websites that can cause you problems if you A, try to use them on a government computer, or B, cause issues if you use them for mission planning. So there you have it, all the above board, and safe-to-use sites for training. Until next time, stay safe, and God bless.